is funny. Fernando de Rojas, La Celestina. Hello and welcome back again. At this point, Sancho frames a fundamental debate about creative writing. Miracles or no miracles, each man should watch what he says or writes about presence and not put down willy-nilly the first thing that pops into his noggin. Sancho's idiomatic expressions and his inability to pronounce persons make his warning sound casual, but it's not. Whether or not novelists should use fantastic events to spice up their plots, to what degree a character's speech should correspond to her social status, and just how spontaneous an author should be while writing are all major issues in Cervantes' day and even in our own. An author's ability to coordinate the right mix of subplots while maintaining a coherent and plausible main story was also hotly debated. Sancho alludes to classical concepts like Aristotle's insistence on the unities of action, time, and place, or his emphasis on realism or mimesis. Did you know a major problem for writers of Cervantes' day was how to maintain the interest of their readers at a time when the use of miracles and fantastical plots was frowned upon by intellectual authorities. Carrasco cuts to the chase by bringing up the first of three major objections to the first part of the novel. According to many readers, the novel of the curious and pertinent the interpolated tale of part one, chapter 33 to 35, does not have anything to do with Don Quixote's story. This is huge. Cervantes actually has characters discuss whether or not he is a bad writer. Ironically and paradoxically, Don Quixote's first reaction is to endorse the criticism. The author of my history was no wise man, but an ignorant gossiper, and groping and without any clear discourse, set himself to writing it. Think about this for a moment. Don Quixote has just called Cervantes an incoherent idiot. According to Sansón Carrasco, what was the first objection that readers had to the first part of Don Quixote de la Mancha? A. The text's lack of historical characters. B. Don Quixote's lack of courage. C. The lack of connection between the main plot and the novel of the curious impertinence. Correct answer, C. The lack of connection between the main plot and the novel of the curious impertinent. Next, he makes a harsh analogy between Cervantes' flimsy technique and that of a certain painter from Ubeda who was so improvisational that he had to label his works. After painting whatever comes out, the painter would write, this is a cock beneath what nobody could recognize as a cock. Still, Don Quixote's final comment suggests that Cervantes' readers will need help to comprehend the true meaning of his art. That must be how my history is. A commentary will be needed to understand it. You will forgive me if I have to agree. Carrasco then gives us specific information regarding just who was reading Cervantes' novel. There's no antechamber in which a lord does not have his copy of Don Quixote. Hmm. Apparently, the novel was read by an educated leisure class somewhere in between the intelligentsia and the masses. For those of us who read Don Quixote as a satire against the orthodoxy of ethnocentric imperialists, Carrasco's subsequent praise of the novel sounds duplicitous. In no place does it contain even a hint of immodest language or a less than Catholic thought. Moreover, when Don Quixote agrees, he refers to the problem of monetary debasement that we saw throughout part one. To write any other way would not be to write truths, but lies, and historians who avail themselves of lies ought to be burned like those who make counterfeit money. The heavy irony here is that Don Quixote says that bad authors who produce lies for the readers are as despicable as counterfeiters who extract wealth from their fellow citizens. And for readers who realize that the Habsburg kings did this as much as anyone else, Cervantes' novel is neither simple nor harmless. That's all for now. We'll see each other in the next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.